All right, what's up, everybody? My name is Jonathan May, and I am excited about today's episode. Uh, I'm actually joined today by, uh, well, I guess I'll let Jared start with the introduction. We'll go to Shane, and then we'll go to Grant. I'm Jared. <laughs> uh, I'm Shane, Shane Smith, Shane O, whatever. And Grant Watley. So I've known Grant for a while. He's, he's been a buddy of mine since uh, the high school days. And uh, Grant is someone that has always been the most passionate DC fan I've ever met in my life. Uh, if you could use the phrase fanboy to describe someone, it would definitely be Grant Watley. He is DC through and through. And uh, then we we're joined today also by Shane Smith, another person I've known for a really long time since I was a kid. Uh, yes, we grew sir. up in the, in the band scene in, in our local hometown, and he was always in a band and I was always in a band. And Jared Mayo, actually, uh, he hosts another show called the M6P. Uh, I was going to give you the opportunity to plug that if you wanted to. Uh, really cool Facebook page that they have. And, uh, you know, his... So Jared Mayo and Andy, um, I forget his last name, Jared, help me out. Kirby. Andy Kirby. So I worked with Andy Kirby in uh, Louisiana back in 2012. And uh, anyway, Andy's a really great guy. And him and Jared are really good friends. And they're the two that kind of started the M6P. And from there, it just grew. You know, their social media presence grew. And uh, yeah, so anyway, what I'm really excited about today is the fact that Grant is the ultimate DC fanboy and Jared, apparently this is news to me until like a couple days ago. Jared does not typically like DC stuff. Is that correct? <laughs> so, I so I couldn't think of a better person to join us today on our review for the suicide squad. Not Suicide Squad, but the Suicide Squad. Not to be confused. Exactly. So uh, <laughs> I guess we'll get right into things. Um, you know, I guess we could preface this by saying that the first Suicide Squad that came out five years ago, I think all of us are pretty much in agreement that that one was crap. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Pretty so much. I actually have some notes here. So uh, we'll start off. Honestly, I thought the music in this film was terrific as always with James Gunn films he doesn't just pick random songs that are cool you know it's almost like he picks really cool songs that fit well with the story and the movie and what's going on so uh I really enjoyed how it started off with Johnny Cash I thought that was cool what'd you guys think about the music uh I thought it was worse than the last one actually I thought the music was good I thought the first one had better music Wait a minute. So you're saying you think that this Suicide Squad movie is worse than the first one? No, that's oh. not what I'm saying. I'm saying the music was oh, uh, better okay. in the first one. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's kind of my complaint with the first one. Like it was almost like they picked really cool songs, but the songs didn't really fit well with what was going on. It was just like somebody said, oh, it'd be cool if we put Bohemian Rhapsody in there. Oh, and also yeah. we maybe we should throw in this random song from the 90s. It was really cool hip hop song, you know, like to me. It the just first one. Really well, the first time around. The first one was basically they made the like the coolest trailer possible and they made it so good that the uh, the actual movie was an even bigger letdown than it would have been, I think. Yeah. The trailer was definitely darker and more serious and you thought it was going to be that DC vibe. What do you, what yeah. do you think about the music, Jared? You cool with it or what? Uh, I think he was really trying hard with a lot of the music. I, it just, it was like, to me, it was just, uh, Hey, I want to be cool. Cause guardians of the galaxy was really cool. So let me do this with uh, su the suicide squad. And so for me, it kind of fell flat. Okay. Shane. Well, it, okay, look, I just, we should go ahead and point out the fact that the starting question or statement was on the music. I thought the music was good. I mean, if that's how we're going to start, clearly nuance is the only thing that saved this movie. 
it's <laughs> you know what i'm saying like they they had the neat little things where they would draw the in the sand that they're going to this place or it was this chapter of the book but it's like i guess james gunn is his name it's probably his flair i'm not really sure but uh yeah the music was great i guess but you know there's a lot more to it for sure than that I'm glad you brought up the little titles that, that were like almost animated or what, you know, like the, the roots going down to where Harley sure. Quinn was at. And it was like, meanwhile, Harley, honestly, for me, there was a couple times where that worked. Like it was a little more subtle and I thought it was cool, right. but it got cheesy to me really quick. It almost made it feel like uh, uh, it's hard to like think of an example right off the top of my head right now, but it, it was a little cheesy to me. Yeah, I think I mean, the whole movie was meant to be cheesy. I think that that was uh, I thought that was a good play on their part. I thought that uh, like the talking about the music, I, I thought the music wasn't as good as the last one. The music was still good. Um, and as far as the the little s- subtitles in the background go, I thought that was a, a unique play on their part. Different for sure. Uh, it adds nuance i mean that's the one thing that is but if you look at guardians of the galaxy the way that they built those characters and did those characters it was awesome this movie blew my mind for the fact that in the beginning i mean this is a whole spoiler alert kind of thing i assume oh yeah Uh, by the way anyone who is watching this video who has not seen this film we are going to go into all kinds of deep spoilers so do not spoil the movie for yourself by watching this video go ahead Shane. The beginning of the film blew my mind because it jumped. It was so quick. That was the first note that I wrote down was like, oh, man, this started really quick. Like, because I was like, I don't know who any of these people are. I guess I should have. I mean, I knew who that the main guy was that was recruiting people and then the lady and, you know, whatever. But the characters, I'm like, why is Pete Davidson in this movie? I had no idea until I'm watching it right now that he's in this movie. And then all those guys die. And I'm like, oh, right. So these aren't even the real characters or the characters for the whole show. Honestly, if we're going to talk about characters, I really enjoyed the characters. I thought almost every character in the film was unique in their own way. Hilarious. Uh, I can go on and on. Like Peacemaker, John Cena, excellent casting. Uh, He was hilarious. It was almost like a corrupt version of Captain America, you know? Uh, He did what he needed to do. What is it? I said he did what he needed to do. He leaned into that character, and they leaned into it, and it worked. I mean... Oh, yeah, 100%. Uh, The weasel was hilarious, that little scene with Pete Davidson and the weasel in the plane. He's like, wait a minute, is this a werewolf? And he's he's, he's trying to get out of there. There was so much hilarious stuff. Viola Davis as Amanda Waller. I love her as that character. She's so, like, just, I mean, she really makes you believe that she's that type of person, you know, like, she's great actress. Matter of fact, when when I think back of the first Suicide Squad movie, in my opinion, she was one of the few bright lights in that film, you know, as an actress and uh, a character. But uh, yeah, the characters for me, man, I can go on and on. Bloodsport, Idris Elba, fantastic. Um, King Shark, I thought was hilarious. The fact that Sil- Sylvester Stallone plays the voice of King Shark was absolutely hilarious for me when he's when he's looking at the fish in the aquarium and he's like running around, he's like, Ooh, I was, I was just <laughs> dying laughing. <laughs> but uh, I thought the yeah, casting I was. What, what did you think, I, uh, Mr. Mayo? Uh, I thought the characters were horrible. I, I was just like, I just, I couldn't care about any of them. There wasn't, uh, the only one I cared about, because Jennifer and I just came up with nicknames for everybody because these were not even like C-list characters in the D in the DC universe. So I didn't know who half these people were. So I was like, yellow shirt. I like yellow shirt. I remember yellow shirt from the first suicide squad. So I liked him. I know what he had going on because he had something established. Everyone else was just that they weren't in the movie long enough or they didn't build enough that I could care about them. Whereas, you know, like, um, you know, guardians of the galaxy, they let me know who Star Lord was, and they built him up, and I got to care about him. Uh, same with Gamora and and Groot and Drax. Like they gave us parts of their story, whereas they're just like, "Here's the second Rat Girl. Uh, you know, her dad used to be the first Rat Dude. Okay, great. Here's a polka dot guy, and he sees mom as ba- as villains, and and like this guy wants to be Captain America. And then we got Amanda Waller who. 
like that's the exact role she plays in how to get away with murder like the exact same character so i was just i didn't care about anybody i was rooting for everybody to die by the end except for yellow shirt and then they killed yellow shirt and i was like he's the only one i liked how could you kill yellow shirt I, I will say that Harley Quinn, for me, fell a little flat. It was like the same old crap that we've seen from that character before. Uh, honestly, I thought when, when it comes to all the characters, she was definitely the weakest link. But, man, I, I can't disagree with Jared Moore. I, I love the characters. I thought they introduced, like, you can't just have 30 minutes of exposition. You have to speed things up because you have so many characters so I thought they that James Gunn handled that well. Like when the, when the Rat Catcher Two was in the bus, you saw the little flashback of kind of a, a taste of her life and why she does what she does, and you know who her father was. They they gave you so much with just so little. Even King Sharks looking out the window of the bus and he sees the two people hugging on the side of the street in the alleyway, and you see the emotion on his face. And it just really, to me, that tells you everything you need to know about that character. You know, like it's, I thought they did, a, or they, when I say they, I think James Gunn did a really good job of telling us as much as he could about these characters in the amount of time that he had. Because don't forget, the movie was already two hours and 15 minutes. You can't make a Suicide Squad movie that's three hours long. So I get, you know, why they did things the way they did it. Uh I talked to some other friends of mine that uh, had a problem with how everyone died at the beginning of the movie. I thought that was kind of cool. Like it was unpredictable, something we didn't expect. And uh, I thought it was great. I think, you think there, Grant? Oh shit. Sorry. I thought, I thought the, uh, the casting was good. Um, by the way, I hate Pete Davidson. So I was glad to see him get killed immediately. Uh, also, I think uh, I like, Sylvester Stallone as King Shark. Um, I just, I kind of wish the animation was a little different. I'm kind of torn between whether I like the anim the animation of the King Shark or not, because I kind of like Flash's uh, big ripped King Shark. You know, you can tell he's strong. And uh, this one kind of looked kind of small and flabby and unathletic. But it, it didn't bother me too bad. Uh, that wasn't that bad of a, a issue, but uh, I agree with you, Jonathan. I think that they gave you little hints throughout the movie, trying to get just enough of their backstory. No, you're not going to care deeply about each one of these characters because they don't go their whole through their whole life. Uh, but I think it was kind of like Car Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, in Guardians of the Galaxy, they gave you this big tree thing that says, "I am Groot." no idea what planet he's from or anything. They give you a little like one sentence description of what he is and where he comes from. Drax, he basically says, uh, yeah, Thanos killed my family. Gamora says, yeah, uh, Thanos raised me. I don't think that you, I think throughout the movie, you get kind of a storyline, just like with the rat girl. Uh, at the end, you finally learn like that her dad taught her everything and, and you don't really get where they come from, but you get uh, just enough to make it entertaining. I don't think this movie was necessarily to be a heartfelt movie that you're going to just be in awe of. I think James Gunn delivers uh, hamburgers. I think everyone loves a hamburger. I think you can enjoy a hamburger. And I think James Gunn delivers hamburger movies that are good, but they're not meant to be the best movie you've ever seen or anything. You know, well, you bring up a really. A limb and I'll say I like cheeseburgers with mustard, and that I think was the <laughs> problem. Was it was just the hamburger, and I wanted. I was like, "Come on, give." I wanted to like it because I love Marvel's Thunderbolts. Love that team, and this is kind of like the you know DC and and Marvel. If they had a comparison, that would be their version. So I really wanted to eat this hamburger and just enjoy it. And I was just like, "Man, if you threw a slice of cheese on there." Like, give me a little bit, because I know it's not supposed to be a heartfelt movie. Like, absolutely. I, I wasn't going in this movie planning to cry. And if I would have cried, I would have been upset because I cried during a suicide spot. But I just, I think you bring up the, the, like, how James was able to take Groot, who could say three words, and make you care about him so that when he becomes that tree and he, and he, folds in on them when the ship is about to crash and saves everybody you're like oh my gosh they're gonna kill Groot whereas when 
these other characters in Suicide Squad died, I was like, okay, look, next, like who's who's gonna be next? You know, I didn't have that that connection. Yeah. What say you, Shane? Yeah, I mean, something about uh, this film, I'd say it was split into like six sections. And it's like at the end of every section, they just gave up to me. You know what I'm saying? And then they started on the next section. It's great. And then at the end of the section, they just gave up. I mean, not to, you know, blow the lid here, but the the big bad villain at the end of this movie to me, it was a huge letdown. I was like, I can't even believe that it is a, this is, to me, it's the way I feel about Will Ferrell. (laughs) <laughs> it's like i just don't like where's the ending here like this ending just doesn't never lands and to me the whole like last 30 minutes of the movie was just so i liked it when they hit homegirl with the uh, golf club it was awesome but you know the characters uh, back to what we were actually talking about the characters it's like they've got idris elba there and i really like him as an actor kind of but he's i guess he would fit into the cheeseburger category <laughs> but like you know what you're gonna get with him but other than that like i didn't i didn't care but i also i'm not a huge comic book guy but i love the movies so when all i have to go on just like a lot of other movies is well that was probably something if i read the comics then i would you know i just let stuff pass because i'm like oh well if i would have read the comics then i'd know who this shark man is you know he's a cool character because he reminds me of those uh, that show or those toys we used to play with as kids street sharks uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah but you know as far as that goes i mean I'm not too critical on it because I know I'm, I'm not that invested in it aside from I really want to see this movie and everybody's talking about it. And I would not say it was a bad movie. I think my expectations are too high because I am addicted to Marvel movies. Yeah. Um, I don't know, guys. I, I feel like I'm somewhere in, in between the middle of all you. Um, I, I definitely, <laughs> I don't agree with Jared in the fact that <laughs> Or in the sense that I think that those characters, in the amount of time they were given, they were developed as much as they could be. Also, Grant brought up a really good point with Guardians. I never thought about that. But really, I mean, we never really got much backstory on the Guardians either. I think it was more in that in the Guardians films, we just kind of were introduced to who they were by what they did in the present. You know, kind of like Jared was talking about how Groot, you know, put the – protective cocoon or whatever you want to call it around all the guardians when, when they were falling. Right. But um, I don't know, a lot of interesting points. Um, I, I guess like that, that's my thing too. I didn't really have, I didn't expect this was going to be like citizen Kane or gone with the wind. You know, I, 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 thought, I, I mean, like I knew it was going to be a fun, silly movie with good humor, some cool action. To me, it was an added bonus that it was rated R, you know, you got a little bit more bloody and guts in there. Um, I honestly, I mean, like if we're going to talk about, you know, overall what we thought already, which I didn't expect we were going to do that, but we might as well, I guess at this point, uh, I enjoyed it. I didn't think it was the best comic book movie ever, but I gave it a seven. I think that, or I'm sorry, a 7.5. I think that it's better than Black Widow. I, I definitely think that it's better than Black Widow. Yeah. I mean, it's... <laughs> Black Widow, okay, so the, at the end of that film, the conclusion of that film, her, you're talking about Starro, right? That's someone, someone had a complaint about Starro. Her big baddie that she has to face is some old guy who's supposed to be like a Harvey Weinstein type, right? Okay, <laughs> so she gets there and then all she has to do is headbutt the desk to break her nose, right? And that's, that's the conclusion of the that's film. It. I mean, I'm not crapping on Black Widow too much. I'm just saying, in comparison, I enjoyed the Suicide Squad slightly more than I did Black Widow. That's kind of where I'm at with it. Yeah, I I, uh, I think the villain was not the worst. I think that that was a classic 1960s uh, villain that they brought back the Justice League yeah, previously. It was, it was fought. cool how they brought him back. Like that was a yeah. villain that nobody expected to see. I mean, yeah, it, it's a it's a big it's a giant starfish, and if you don't read comic books or know anything about comics, you're going to be like, "What the crap is that?" But uh, I thought it was uh, I didn't think it was the worst villain, and I thought it was interesting how they uh, decided to take him out. It was cheesy though, a, a little cheesy for sure, with the starfish <laughs> around people's faces. But I'm not saying that it was the coolest thing ever. But honestly, like that's kind of how I feel about it right now. 
I know that uh, generally, you know, when comic book movies first come out, I usually rank them a little higher. And then about a year or so after it's, you know, it's been a little time has passed. Usually those movies fall a few places on my rankings list. Me too. So, Me too. So, so maybe, you know, it's uh, what, what's the, the word I could use or the phrase, uh, the new car smell, right? Yeah. But that's kind of where I'm at now. So uh, I do, I do want to talk about a few more specific things. I died laughing when <laughs> TDK, it was like, TDK, do your thing. And, it, and his arms came off. <laughs> he just starts slapping people. Like, that made me die laughing. I thought that was so funny. I, I love the little things like that. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Polka Dot Man. So that's funny to me because, all right. <laughs> so James Gunn, I was actually watching a featurette for this film at some point a couple weeks ago. And James Gunn Googled the dumbest DC villain of all time. And it was the polka dot man, right? So he looked at that as a challenge, like, okay, bet. I'm going to, I'm going to put this guy in our movie and I'm going to make everyone care about this character. Personally, I cared about polka dot man a lot. I thought he was cool. Uh, I felt like I understood, you know, why he did the things he did. Uh, He was experimented on as a kid. And when he died, to me, it was a big deal. I was like, oh, man, this is terrible. I know Jared didn't feel the same, though. (laughs) Tell him I don't want to see his mom anymore. (laughs) I kept picturing uh, the the crazy guy from uh, The Dark Knight, the schizophrenic. That's him. That's the guy that plays Polka Dot Man. Yeah, Yeah. that's what I'm saying. I I kept picturing the schizophrenic character every time I'd see him on screen. Which uh, it didn't take away from the movie, I don't think, but I just couldn't get it out of my head. I had him on my notes list, and I was like, every role this guy plays, he's a creep. Like he is either heavily yeah. depressed, like or, or heavily creeping. Like he's got <laughs> a lot going on, whatever he's in. He's never going to be a leading man in anything. You're never <laughs> not, see him no, save not. the damsel in distress or Die Hard Seven. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, that is not a poster nose. That is for sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, with what they did with him, I thought they did as best as they could with that character, you know, like, and that actor. Uh, So, yeah, like I said earlier, Harley Quinn was probably my least favorite thing about the film. Um, You know, I've liked her in some other movies. Like, in the original Suicide Squad, I thought she was probably the only, her, Amanda Waller, maybe Will Smith's character, Deadshot were some of the few things that were good about that film. Uh, I know this is controversial, but I personally don't mind the Jared Leto Joker. A lot of people think that he's <laughs> he's dumb and he uh, almost reminds them of <laughs> Jim Carrey's The Mask. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, it was a different take and uh, you know something different, unique and original. I didn't mind it that much. I'm not saying he's anywhere near Heath Ledger's performance or anything like that, but, you know, I appreciated it for what it was. Jared Leto is usually a, a hit or miss actor, I think. And uh, like I just watched that movie. What was that movie where he was the uh, that killer that came out not long ago? Oh, yeah, The Little Things. Yeah. And uh, he's okay. Uh, I just hate some of the lines they gave him in the other – movie uh like when they're in that helicopter and he was like it's just me and you honey like <laughs> that, that ticked me off his delivery and, it was more is very jim carrey-esque like uh jim yeah carrey maskish i'm just glad there was no uh dancing stripper god in this one so uh <laughs> i guess we'll move on to oh yeah that scene where they uh they think that they're saving Rick Flag, and they kill these people brutally, and it ends up being their allies. I thought that was hilarious too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that that was a really sad moment because I'm like, now what are they going to do? But clearly, it wasn't that big of a deal. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. I guess they kind of uh, jumped past that pretty quickly, but it was pretty funny <laughs> to me. <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. Oh, yeah. I read an interview with James Gunn this morning, and he said. 
DC kind of gave him a Warner Brothers, whatever, just said free for all, do whatever you want. Yep. And then when that cut came in and that scene, he said that that scene was the one that they were almost like, we can't do this. This is just too much. And you're saying that was the funniest scene for you. You, what is wrong in your heart and your mind, Jonathan? <laughs> Hold up. I didn't say that was the funniest scene to me. I just said it was pretty funny, right? I no, think I'm afraid for you. <laughs> I think that was hilarious. Like, I don't know. I just maybe I have a dark sense of humor, but <laughs> it was just hilarious because they were so serious, like about taking these people out and setting people on fire and <laughs> chopping people up with hatchets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it turns out they were their allies i don't know i just thought i thought that was funny <laughs> like a whole 10 minutes of slaughtering people that didn't need to die right yeah oh my it's so funny jonathan <laughs> <laughs> i got a kick out of it what can, what can i say i'm not talking about like while they were killing the people and dismembering them i'm not saying that i was just ha 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 laughing at that i'm i'm saying like after they found out like whoops <laughs> That yeah. was our allies. Like I, I thought that was funny. And then King Shark coughs up the, whatever it was, like somebody's ring or something. But you know, obviously at that point, and then Polka Dot Man was like, "I envisioned they were my mother, and I killed them." <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, I, I, I thought it was pretty crazy. Like you know, it's not real life for sure because if that shark would have started trying to eat that girl, they would have killed that shark. <laughs> like all them dudes would have shot that shark to death. <laughs> oh no, he we should... did. Well. <laughs> Yeah, I just meant like when they were, he was about to eat the rat girl. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, uh, not dead shot, but blood sport. And, oh, uh, yeah, they were both. shooting him. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. Did y'all think about the, uh, uh, the, sorry to cut you off. No, you Did y'all think about the uh, CGI and effects in this movie? It was hit and miss, really. There were some scenes that were great. And then, kind of like what you said was King Shark. I, you know, it wasn't the King Shark I was expecting either, but then the King Shark they did give me, he looked very, very CGI. Uh, same with Starro. I was kind of kind of disappointed. But when the heads were sliced in half and falling off, I was like, that looks real. That's exactly yeah. like it looked like in Deadpool. Did y'all like when they, <laughs> when they did the overlays for uh, Harley Quinn stuff? Overlays. Like when she was walking through that hallway for like 45 seconds killing like those 20 dudes, like and it was like shooting flowers and like all these crazy designs and stuff. I honestly, there. and that's something I'm glad you brought that up because I wasn't a fan of that. Yeah. And I also wasn't a fan of that whole little five minute section of the film where she meets the dictator or whatever. And it, and they just kind of go off and yeah, it was weird to me. It felt like it started getting into uh, birds of prey territory for me. I was like, this is kind of odd, you know, like uh, because birds of prey was a terrible film. That is, yeah <laughs> almost as low as it gets and <laughs> it started giving me those vibes pretty quick whenever you know she started kind of going off and having the dream sequence thing or whatever with the the dictator of corto maltese or whatever it was uh definitely odd for me like got that ring right, right down there i think they did uh birds of prey better than the birds of prey <laughs> maybe but uh, Birds of Prey was definitely ranked down there with uh, Thor Dark World to me. Thor the Dark World's not that bad. I thought it, I thought I thought it that Birds of Prey was worse, but I thought that the Thor the Dark World was it's in my probably bottom fifteen. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty bad. That <laughs> yeah, Thor the Dark World is is universally disliked. I guess by most people, but that's another one for me. Like I didn't mind it that much, uh, but we're not doing a review of that. So, <laughs> but uh, I'll get back to some of my notes here. So the thinker, right. Did you guys think the thinker was cool or did you think you really added anything of value to the film? No, I think that he was, um, he could have been, he couldn't even, he didn't have to even be a, a character like a, like from the comic books, he could have just been some random dude and it would have sufficed just as good, I think. Shane? Okay. Yeah, he was he was trash. I mean, I honestly, at first, I didn't even realize who you were talking about, but I assume you're talking about the guy with the uh, things coming out of his head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, he, I mean, he served very little purpose to me. But, I mean, to be fair to my criticism earlier is 
handful of those characters didn't really serve any purpose to me. But I imagine once I go back and watch it again, I'll be more attached to the characters. Because by the end of the movie, I did. I will say that I did like, you know, I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. I wish I could get another movie with these characters again. Maybe they could do it a little, you know, now that I'm already attached and invested, it'd be great for them to have another movie with the same people. But it won't be for another five years, I'm sure, before that happens. So <laughs> I digress. The thinker does means nothing to me. Well, so I can I ask the question? I know this isn't my podcast. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the movie made twenty six million dollars this weekend. The budget was at one eighty five. Do you see five years down the road that it sh- that it gets another shot? Okay. To be fair, we are in very strange times right now, Jared. Don't forget, this is some people are very concerned about the Delta variant, right? That's one major thing. Another major thing is the fact that they released this absolutely free. You don't even have to pay additional money to get this movie on HBO Max. That's what we did. We watched it on HBO Max. Even if we didn't have a 10-month-old baby, we would probably still stay home this weekend and watch it for free on HBO Max. So, I mean, I you got to think that affected the box office big time as well. I mean – at least with Black Widow, which has already drawn a lot of criticism and uh, controversy because of their decision to release it on premium as well as theaters. Uh, Even with that, you had to pay an additional $30 at least to watch it on their streaming service. And uh, it only made, what was it? I thought it was 30, right? 30 plus 30 on the streaming service, which totaled up to 60 for their opening weekend. No, it made made 88 million its opening weekend. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess uh, it, it could be a number of things. I mean, I personally would like to believe that it's because of the COVID Delta variant and the fact that they chose to release it on HBO Max for free at the same time. But maybe there's more to it than that. I don't know. Maybe it's because of DC's spotty track record over the years. Uh, DC puts out a great film and then they put out a crap film. Great film, crap film, a couple crap films, then another great film. It's kind of a mixed bag of goodies when you, when you uh, watch a DC film. In my to answer, opinion, to answer your question, I'm I'm pretty confident that if they don't turn around the whole DC thing and start blowing somebody else out of the water and making a lot more money, they're gonna have no reason to make a second one of these. Like they'll be like, oh well, why would we do this? We need to invest our money in films we know will work, like another Batman movie, and uh, you know we'll redo Superman again as well. Oh, they're already redoing Superman. They have two two Superman projects in development right now. Uh, Both are going to be about a African American version of Superman. One's going to be Val Zod, I guess Uh, that's based off of a, uh, like a storyline where, uh, I don't know, I guess his sister and maybe one of one other relative, maybe Clark Kent also, or, or Kal-El got off Krypton as well as Val Zod. Yeah. I'm not super familiar with this. Are you Jared, by the way? Probably not. I thought you know, Grant was the DC guy. Well, Grant, you're more of like a film fan. You're not like super into the back history of comics and whatnot. Me personally, no. I'm not much of a comic book guy either. I'm more of a comic book movie guy. I mean, ask me anything about any current or in the future comic book movie, and I can tell you anything you want to know about it. But when it comes to the comics and uh, backstory and things like that, I'm not as sharp. Yeah, but, I don't, yeah, I don't know a lot either. There are two Superman projects in development right now. So it looks like they're already kind of going back to that, Shane. Yeah, I mean, so there you go. I mean, I could be wrong, though. Like, I mean, this was obviously separated from, you know, the the rest of the universe. But, I mean, it plays into the same Suicide Squad stuff, which had its little playing into the other movies so i guess it is in the same universe it's just a completely different kind of movie than what we've been getting from uh the justice leagues people <laughs> you know so i mean it, but i would think that i think it's a better movie than some a hand, most of their other movies they've been putting out the past 10, five six years for sure easily but, it's better than the joker to me better than the joker birds of prey uh i actually liked aquaman though I thought that was a very fun film. It's very good to like, you know, it's it's up there to me in that eight, maybe maybe eight. Make, make, I can make an argument for eight point five, but uh, 
Yeah, Justice League was rough. Even the Snyder Cut made some repairs to the story, but it was still four hours long. And it's not, you know, it's just uh, if you're not a hardcore fan, it's hard to to have your grandma and your mom and your dad all sit down to watch. Hey, let's watch <laughs> Justice League, the Snyder Cut. It's four hours long. <laughs> <laughs> Grab some popcorn. A lot. Yeah. So uh, that's the thing about DC right now. Uh, things could possibly change for them. That's a whole nother podcast in itself, but um, I guess I'll get back to the notes here. So I thought it was cool. Also a little tidbit, how Taika Waititi made a cameo as the rat catcher's dad. Did you guys catch that? Yeah, that was crazy. I think, I think there's a, a, a love triangle thing going on with him and uh, James Gunn. Maybe so. <laughs> so, um, uh, Oh, yeah. Another thing that was kind of to me was uh, when the Maltesian soldiers broke into the bar, they busted in. They was like, where are the Americans? They're looking around and there's like a white guy wearing a cowboy hat, a freaking uh, dude with things coming out of his head. And then you got John Cena over there that's like the size of three people. And they're like, where are the Americans? (laughs) I thought that was kind of like, come on, guys. I mean, you know, could have made it a little more. uh, Subtle than that, I guess. Okay, so yeah, towards the end of the film, Cena had the proverbial heel turn, Shane. Yeah. Into the bad guy, right? What did you think about that? Yeah, so I, what I was going to say before before we got out of this conversation, I definitely wanted to say, like, there are, there is something about John Cena being in this movie and the role he played that in my head, I'm like, how could you make a character so perfect for what everyone was thinking when you told us we, that he was in this movie? You know what I'm saying? It's like, what is this guy going to be as a character? Like, because you don't want to see him be serious. You know, or you know, you know, you don't want to see him trying to be like the next like Batman villain or something like that. It's like you don't want to see him in Fast and Furious, that kind of character. So who he was in this movie, despite my criticisms, it was amazing to see him be the guy that he was. And the fact that he turned heel, which to me is one of those things is like you were totally cool with me just letting go of paying attention to this. But of course, I pay attention the whole time how at the end of each section, it just fell off. But John Cena going heel was one of those times where it's like, oh, I don't know, I kind of like this. And then he fought like a savage uh, old boy and killed old boy. And then I was like, wow, you suck, dude. Like, I cannot believe you came into this movie, into this universe, just to kill like the best guy, like as far as the most genuinely, probably decent human on here. And now he's dead. No more of him, he's gone because of John Cena. By the way, a heel heel turn means for those of you who are not wrestling savvy, is just when someone goes from being a good guy to a bad guy, right? Um, yeah, I thought the character that Cena played was great. Uh, I I thought that that matched the character very well. You know, obviously he wants to protect America's best interests, right? Um, and it makes sense that that uh, Viola Davis or Amanda Waller would have him as her backup plan. So I, I'm excited about the, uh, you know, there's going to be a HBO Max exclusive uh, Peacemaker TV series with oh, James Gunn my. directing and John Cena playing Peacemaker. No wonder they've been promoting him so much. Yep. What do you think, Jared? I, I feel like you're, uh, you're holding it all in. What, what do you, oh. Just really let it have it. Um, no, so I, we turned it off as soon as the movie was over. We didn't realize there was an after credit scene. Uh that, you know, DC is also, again, piggybacking off Marvel. They can't just come up with their own stuff. So, because uh, I thought he was dead. I was like, oh, what is what a surprise. They killed somebody else. Uh, John <laughs> Cena, I, I think Shane was, was hit it right on the target. That is John Cena, but in a movie. Like, that's who he, he <laughs> probably is in real life. He's like that in the wrestling ring. On the movie screen, on the internet, the memes, <laughs> like whatever it may be, like right. whatever subcultures have taken and molded him into, that's what he was in that movie. So it was hard, but I mean, because his he is so John Cena, it was very hard to see past. Oh, that's just John Cena in the DC universe, is what I saw, you know. And then there's Heimdall right right beside him, and then Korg is the Rat Catcher's dad. And like and then we got who who how to get away with murder and you got uh jim carrey over there like it, it was really kind of 
difficult for me to get past to everybody really is otherwise but john cena especially it was just like i was waiting for the wrestling ring him to throw back and and do a pile driver or something i don't, I don't know wrestling terms <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so okay i think we're we're finally at the point where jared what did you think of the movie overall if you had to give it a rating between zero zero point five one all the way up to ten where would you put it uh <laughs> all right grant i know we just met each other so don't hate me but uh i'd probably give it a three uh i, I just felt like it really struggled to know what it wanted to be like it wanted to be deadpool and then it wanted to be guardians of the galaxy but then it wanted to be taken seriously and it just it was i felt like he was trying to balance all these different plates of what movie he wanted to make and he was just like running over here and then trying to catch it and and just you know even jonathan as you're going through and being like i didn't like that and i didn't like that and i just realized i didn't like that I'm like exactly those are the things that made it just so off kilter for me and he i just didn't feel like it could figure out what it wanted to be so when it was over is when i was like that's what i wanted it to be i wanted it to be over i'm all done <laughs> <laughs> okay grant what do you think overall what do you give it rating wise uh it's out of all my uh ratings it's i think it's 32 out of what is it 80 80 total movies or something like that between dc and marvel so probably about a six and a half uh it's it wasn't the best movie but it wasn't the worst movie it had decent cgi had uh, s- some good comedy, as you were talking about. And uh, it, ha- it had some really good actors in it as well. So uh, that kind of gave it a little bit of a boost, I think. Uh, but like I said, it was, a, it, was a good, it was a good hamburger. The comedy for me, like, that was probably the best thing about the film. I love the comedy. The action was really cool. I'm a big fan of, like, expendable type, Punisher type action violence and stuff like that i love that stuff i eat it up uh apparently i'm demented we've we've discovered today so so uh honestly i give it a i gotta give it a 7.5 i enjoyed the film overall of course i have some some small criticisms heck i have criticisms with avengers infinity war there's a part where thor's trying to create his new hammer and it takes like 15 minutes and it's just slow so that's even a criticism for me with one of my all-time favorite superhero films of all time so of course i'm going to have criticisms um overall it was fun it accomplished what it set out to do that that, like i said the action was cool i enjoyed most all of the characters harley felt a little stale to me but you know what overall i give it a 7.5 i had a good time shane yeah i uh despite my my criticism about the movie i mean uh, and the way I was speaking earlier about the nuance is what saved it, but the nuance is what saved it. Like it's the, anytime a movie's got those little bitty moments, like when the bird came back and got its revenge, like the bird, like another bird came and ate Merle. And it's like, Oh, not Merle, but whatever his character's name was, but I think Merle <laughs> for the walking dead, <laughs> <laughs> whatever they came and got hippie Merle and Devant. ate him. Devant. Yeah. I, I was like, there you go. I was like, it's like poetic justice or whatever, like those kind of little moments. And, you know, like the little things with John Cena and each character having those little moments, despite me not being super into them, the quirkiness of different characters, that probably is going to uh, be one of the saving graces for it. But overall, to y'all's point, it's, you know, it, it, it did what it was set out to do. I was not mad that I watched it after it was over. You know, I was like, well, I'm glad I watched this. I'm glad that you had hit me up about it because I probably would have waited a while to watch it. So I got it out the way, did this. I'd give it a seven for sure to answer the question uh i was not entirely disappointed but my hopes were not very high so you know heck yeah guys well hey i appreciate you guys coming on today thank you so much everybody have a great day until next time